Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode, episode 14 of Tilted Talk. As always, you're with your hosts, Trooper and Trooper. I just realized I just realized I'm still in a game right now in a soul in a soul <laughs> game. Should I keep playing? No. All right, no, you love you. Oh. <laughs> Here's what you do. You hide, and if you somehow manage to stay uh, alive until like the last five, we'll grant you that. We'll allow I you to play it out, okay? Uh, okay, okay. Well, Good. That was an interesting start to the show, but uh, yeah, guys, thanks for uh, coming to uh, talk some Fortnite with us, as always. Unfortunately, this week, there are no patch notes. Epic has decided to thwart our you know, patch notes section and move that to Thursday, so mm-hmm. maybe we'll talk a little bit. Let's start, actually, before we get into the actual show, uh, the rest of it, where we have a lot of concrete information to discuss. Let's talk about that storm in a bottle that is yeah. looks it's the only thing that we know is coming out next patch. Uh, it was the only thing that we're positive is happening. Uh, obviously, there's not too much information on it, but it seems like it could be interesting. The ability to either, you know, add storm damage to your opponent or potentially remove storm damage from yourself. Yeah. How do you think that'll work? Well, I'm wondering if it's going to work from, like, the floor to the sky, you know, where it, it is a, it, or is the yeah, going to travel. Yeah, circle. Right. I'm wondering if it's going to create an, another circle, if it's going to last, the, you know, as long as, a, you know, the the entire game. Like, la- I don't know how that's going to work completely. So this, this could have potential to really change things uh, pretty heavily. Yeah. I'm also curious how, the, how big the radius is going to be. Yeah, I'm thinking, hear me out, this might be crazy, but I'm thinking that it might be a, you throw it on yourself and it creates like a bubble, a force field around you that for like 15 seconds or 10 seconds that if you're moving inside the storm, you don't take damage. Or if I hit you with it and you get hit by a tick of it, like the explosion, kind of like a, like a, uh, one of the stinker bombs, stinker grenades, yep. then if you get hit by that initial blast, then you would have a storm circle around yourself for 10 seconds or whatever that does damage that you can't escape. I'm pretty sure that that is going to be a concept. I, I, but I'm, I don't know. I, I, from the description, it sounds like it's going to work both ways. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I think it'll have that dual feature, right? Uh, if I called it, guys, you heard it here first. Clip that. Get ready. The profit is here. Uh, I'm probably going to be wrong. But just in <laughs> case just in case I'm not, that previous section will be beautiful. <laughs> yes. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it from from like updates on the week. Otherwise, you know, the, the game is in the same place that it was a week ago, which is fantastic, especially for the competitive players. Um, but obviously, you know, I, I'm interested. I have a feeling that whatever they do release in this patch will not be playable for patch uh, for week nine of the, the World Cup, which brings us to the World Cup. Um, just because they did that last time with the drum gun, they vaulted it for an extra week in the competitive playlist to give p- people more time to adapt. And I have a feeling we're going to see the very same thing here just because I can already in my brain hear the screams from people. If they were to release something on Thursday that's going into competitive tournament play for $50,000 on Saturday. Uh, and actually, they doubled the prize pools for weeks 9 and 10. Yeah, I'm not sure I if did, you saw that. That's huge. I, I did see uh, that uh, that's going to be uh, you know st- stakes are going to be even higher. They want they want as many more people to play to get on these last couple weeks out as they can. And for people that haven't qualified, man, this is do or die situation. A lot of these people that have been trying since week one, ah oh, man, the, the stress right now must be through the roof. Oh man, yeah, I couldn't even imagine. Like if you're one of those people, especially if you're good, like Aspect and Animal, for example, who are two people that we had, uh, not two, but we had Aspect on the show on a previous episode. Yeah. And you know they're a duo that I believe even Bala cited them as one of the people that he thought for sure was going to qualify, or that he would put his money on to qualify. Like these are this is a top duo, and the fact that they haven't been able to crack it yet, really unfortunate for them. And you know the pressure's got to be rising; it's got to be mounting at this point. But to get into the World Cup results from Last week, I thought it was really interesting because we actually are starting to see some really, really cons- like some consistent play um, from some of these teams. Like especially in Europe, if you look at who qualified this week in Europe, like a bunch of the top teams that actually qu- that would have qualified. Like I think the fourth team, the fir- the top three teams had already all qualified. Yeah, the, that's the thing about all these qualifiers and not locking people out that have already qualified. They have the best practice you could possibly get you're going to be competing against some of these people already as it is in new york so i mean might as might as well get the highest possible tier gameplay you're going to you're not going to get this kind of gameplay this kind of 
desperation, I should even say, from some players in scrims. It, it's hard, too, when a lot of players still have to deal with that time frame of three hours versus a, a, as well as getting 10 games and whatever comes first because they have to deal with a lot of people that don't have much of a chance compared to the people that are only a few points off and then they're worrying about people W keying, getting aggressive, just trying to ruin their games. There's so many little nuances a lot of people have to worry about and what it gets, especially in the later portions of this. And you have to look at... Honestly, the qualifiers, you have to look at all three hours as one big picture, one big game, essentially, the way that yeah. it all levels out. Yeah, definitely. And it was kind of interesting, actually, because even just watching some of the, you know, the qualifier action this weekend, it's crazy. Like, especially on Sunday when they get into that last game, you know, it's the very last game of the day uh, type scenario once the queue has been stopped. You'll see multiple different styles of end games. Like some end games, there's 40 people left. And then in the other end game, there's like 15 people left and with the same size circle. And it's like, that's just a very drastic difference in play style. Obviously, you know, once it comes to the World Cup itself, I have a feeling we're going to be seeing games that are much more similar to that 40, t 40 people left um, end game yep. circle than the 20 people, so to speak. Um, but it's just interesting that you don't really know what you're getting into in any of these games. You kind of have to be ready for super aggro players, like you mentioned. Like, people have different play styles uh, based on how much time they've got left and how much of a, a realistic shot they've got at it, right? Because if you don't have a very realistic shot, maybe you just say, well, the hell with it. I'd rather just go as hard as I can, see if I can get a couple of big kills on some big streamers, embarrass somebody who's got a real chance, and maybe be that spoil sport, so to speak. Um, it's like the the motivation for terrible teams in like the NBA and the NHL and stuff, right? Like, well, we're not right. going to make the playoffs, but maybe we can stop these guys from making the playoffs. Always got to play that number one seed. Yeah. Um, and there's definitely a lot of people doing that. There's definitely a lot of people stream sniping, doing all that sort of stuff, but. Uh, I do want to give one shout out in particular to Mongrel. I watched their first game. Mm -hmm. I actually went back and watched a VOD. This guy, his duo, uh, Mich Mitro, Mitro, died mm -hmm. pretty early. Not pretty early, but there was a fair amount of people left. And Mongrel won the game with 16 kills, getting 31 points for his team. He's so nasty. In that first game, dude, it, th his ability to laser people out of the sky when they're like uh, either, you know, taking a rift or using a parachute or a redeploy, or even when they're taking the slipstream. Like, I, there's multiple clips of him just Scary. absolutely lasering people out of those slipstreams. It is nuts. So, I mean, these kids are so good. But yeah, like I said, top spots one, two, and three in Europe were actually already pre-qualified. These guys, you know, like the people who qualified this week actually came fourth, fifth, sixth. Uh, Item and D-Rocks were the, the top top duo that actually qualified, and they, they came in fourth. So um, it's pretty pretty crazy. Um, on the European side, we had that duo from Ghost that I think everybody thought was going to qualify eventually, Sean and Aiden. Um, yep. And actually, I think I'm going to be on a panel with Aiden at E3. So if you guys are there, come check that out. We'll be that's uh, going to be a blast. We'll be talking esports, um, so that should be really cool. But everybody thought that they were going to qualify. Everybody knew. You, you don't know, obviously, but you know a lot of people who were in the know were saying that these guys had a very, very good shot at it, and they did it. So huge shout out to those guys, especially because they're both. I'm pretty sure they're both like 16. Yeah, seven. Like they're both super. They're young. really young, but and they just made more money than somebody working a minimum wage job full time. Take that, parents. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but some. I'm wondering if it's gonna be enough to talk some of these kids' parents into moving cross country. Can we be closer uh, so our our ping gets a little bit better? I mean. Well, uh, the they might actually, uh, might actually buy into that. Yeah, especially, well, I mean, it, it depends on the, the financial background and the job security of the parents too, right? But it's very easy for, like, this is a weird spot where now your 17-year-old kid could legitimately be making more money than you while playing video games at home, and you have a real job. Real job. Mind blowing. <laughs> It's pretty crazy. I mean, I love I love 2019, dude. It is a I'm, cool time to be alive. The World Cup is going to be so exciting. It's going to be li life changing money just in one day. Somebody's going to be walking away with. I can't I can't wait to see who that is. Yeah, it's going to be so much trash talk is finally going to be answered. Like so yeah. years worth of questions. Yep, definitely. Um, there's another duo that qualified this week that I think we're going to get into with our hot takes section uh, a little bit in more depth, but I think you guys all remember Code Ronaldo and Ziff, XXIF. They qualified this week. They How came can in we third. forget? It's difficult. It's difficult, uh, but we'll get into that a little bit later, but they're in, you know, whether they stay in or not is to be seen. 
Uh, we were also supposed to have a couple of the Bolt guys on this week, or one of the Bolt guys on this week that qualified, but unfortunately, you know, some things came up and they weren't unable to. They were unable to do the show, but hopefully, they will come on after E3 um, next week. Guys, will be our one week off, which we never really do, but um, you know, this week we kind of have to. I'm not going to be around, so E3 uh, baby. Yeah, so next week, guys, there will be no show. Just a friendly reminder again. Um, is there anything else you wanted to touch on in, in terms of the World Cup action that we saw from last week or anything? Anybody that you, you're expecting to see qualify that we still haven't seen qualify and you're like, I'm I'm still willing to bet that they're going to get in next week? Because now a lot of the best players have qualified, right? Like there's a lot of big names that are already in. So they're still playing in the event. They're still streaming. But I feel like a lot once they've qualified, they're kind of changing their play style to be more methodical. Like, okay, I'm going to play this correctly. And mm-hmm. even if this guy W keys me and kills me, it's not as big of a deal because... I'm practicing for the actual World Cup against the top players, and they're using it more like a scrim than they are like a game that's a must-win. So is there anybody that you expect to kind of pull out the clutch here in the last week, or do you think we're going to see yet another person that's very unknown? I, I think I think Ninja's going to secure his spot. It's going to it's gonna be the best. It's going to be a great story if he secures it in the final week for, for solos because he's actually been grinding it out. And if he's not there, that's going to – Honestly, if you're if you're epic, you better hope he gets there. That's like 50k viewers you're losing just from that. But for real, he needs to be there because I want to see the best of the best, all the top names be like there. And when you look at him, I see him. Rather, than, if I'm looking at him as a streamer or a pro player, I look at him way more as a pro player, as a competitive player. So I want to see him compete with all these other names. I want to give a shout out to Aiden, the first and only controller player to qualify for the world cup which a lot of people said couldn't be done but my man did it so yeah, big shout out to him that's exciting yeah that's awesome um gives us hope gives us plebs hope everywhere <laughs> um you know I, I think he's playing on a pc though right so i mean right. that still yeah. does that's that's better than you know playing on an actual console because of frame rate and pov exactly. field like all that sort of stuff but um yeah, congrats to him. Also, since you mentioned Ninja, actually, it wouldn't be right for us to host a Fortnite show on Ninja's birthday and not wish him a happy birthday. So, exactly. Tyler, if you're out there, happy birthday, brother. I uh, hope you had a good day. Uh, it is nighttime now, so don't get too crazy. Got to stream in the morning. <laughs> um, but I think that pretty much does it for like the actual World Cup stuff from last week. I mean, uh, you know, we could sit here and talk highlights and stuff like that, but um, I think there's more pressing things to discuss. So mm. let's get into the uh, first thing. Uh, I think I had these backwards, but based on the fact that we've already brought it up, let's talk about Ronaldo and Ziff. They qualified. So, yeah. Yikes. So, so I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you. With what happened? So, for anybody who doesn't know, real you know, quick elevator or you know, sky from the sky summary here is these guys qualified in week four, I believe. Mm. Week four, right? Uh. And- so what uh, uh, what I believe happened was uh, I looked into it and it was the first week that duos were available. They did solos the first week, then second week was duos, and that was the week that this uh, situation I believe happened. Okay, so it was week two. I want to say so, yeah. They they qualified at the very beginning. You know, one of the, they were one of the first teams to qualify in NA East, and then you know some people kind of went back, reviewed the vods. I think you might be right actually, because it was the first week that people had access to full VOD review. Mm-hmm. And yep. uh, they reviewed the VODs, and they found that there was some very fishy behavior from some people. Then it got worse because Ziff said he didn't know these people. And then other po- popular you know, Fortnite community members said, hey, I know both of the people in question, and they are 1,000% friends. Like, I know this for a fact. So that did not put yep. – that was not the greatest PR. Um, for future reference, guys, it's... it's better to not say anything than it is to lie because then you get caught in a lie, and it's a double down. Like, just don't do that. It's not a good look. Um, yeah. So Fortnite and Epic in a what I think to be a, a pretty generous move suspended them for two weeks. That's all they did. So they basically kicked them out of one qualifier. Because you have to remember mm-hmm. the solos are, you know, right. duos are on every other week, right? So yep. they kicked them out of one qualifier. Yep. How do you feel about the fact that they were able to again compete and then enter and qualify, you know, legitimately or not? There's already a play circulating that people are questioning about them now but i know i i was gonna bring that up i i've seen that as well yeah in the same location yeah what well, is their drops to be fair that right. is their drop spot right, right. so True. like you have to cut them some slack um yeah. but so it, this kind of opens a couple of interesting avenues like one how 
you know, for one, they're almost just tainted now. Like anything that wouldn't be suspicious if we saw it on another screen is going to look infinitely more suspicious now that we see it from them. Mm -hmm. Two, um, you know, what do you think about them being allowed to compete and then actually qualify and represent Epic and represent Fortnite and attend the World Cup? And then three, um, damn, I had something good. What was three? Okay, answer the number two and then we'll go back to three. Well, I mean, with them all being able to qualify now, the fact that they tried to cheat, they were attempt they attempted attempted to cheat in the second week and came back already. They let's be fair, I think everybody can agree that they should have been banned for the remainder of the qualifiers for this season and for this World Cup, at the least. Uh, I mean, just it, it you're already you already have so many people questioning the integrity of the competitive nature of the game. And now this is such a, a bad scenario because I'm gar- I, I'm assuming that Epic, since this hasn't happened before uh, and there was big community backlash, they kind of had to have put their foot down in some way and, 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 and retort. So they ended up putting this two-week ban, which essentially only worked for one duo's week, as you said. And now they come back and they and just being able to qualify again, uh, taking a, a spot away from another team. Uh, probably that could have qualified. I mean, it, if they didn't get caught, if people didn't look at them when this happened in week two, the question is, would they have kept trying? Uh, you know, they uh, they said they you know they apologized, but it's always you know you're sorry you got caught, never sorry you did it. Yeah. There there there's so many different angles to it, and the fact that it was the second week of the first duos week, and that they tried to cheat. That that just shows that they weren't trying to play fair from the get go. That they that even in the first available week, let's go, let's try this. It's not like it was week eight, like like or week nine and or week ten, and then they there's a de- desperation mode. We have to qualify. Let, let's see if we can get people to feed us kills. They they were trying that right away, trying to see what they can get away with, and clearly they now see what they can get away with because they were able to come back play, and now everything's under a microscope from them so who's to say what what the deal is now because um you know uh, a, a lot of people are going to say like on the flip side are they really that dumb to try and cheat again but yeah uh i mean at this point what <laughs> what do they have to lose really at this point yeah i mean that's i heard a lot of streamers say that you know like i doubt they would try to cheat twice that would be dumb especially because you know uh, I'm sure Epic, even with as soon as they qualified, I'm sure Epic went in and, and started reviewing their VODs just to make yeah. sure that there was nothing funny or fishy going on. True. Um, to your point, though, would it really be like for me, you know, I think that the action is the action. It doesn't the circumstances, you know, sometimes they can they can play a part. But when it comes to something like cheating, you know, cheating in week two versus cheating in week 10 to me is equally deplorable. Um, right. So it's, I, I guess I could understand it more in week 10, like you really wanted to qualify. But the thing that kind of weirded me out about this whole thing is that, you know, from everybody I've spoken to and some listening to some of the other top players and uh, casters and stuff like that, these are legitimately really good players, right? It's not like right. these guys are some scrubs that don't know how to play Fortnite and this was their absolute only way to get in. Like these guys, like, as this week apparently proved, they can hang, they can win. They can do really well. So they didn't need to cheat. They didn't need to do that, right? Um, and that's that's what, uh, to me, is the more frustrating thing because it's like you have this talent. You have this ability. You kind of got to just have the confidence and trust in yourself that you can do it. Um, to play devil's advocate a little bit, is it a nice little redemption story in the sense that, you know, they come back and they are able to qualify like are they they'd reformed be, are they going to be, be the good boys heroes. now like they would be the biggest heroes ever if uh, this turns out that it was all a farce and they were wrongly accused or something like that <laughs> but i mean uh, the the evidence from the first uh, attempt that this you know, in week 2 i mean everybody seems uh seems to be pretty confident with uh, what yeah. went down yeah, and I, I mean, I don't think Epic would have banned them if they weren't very, very, very certain, right? Um, right. I think it would have just risked too much. So I agree. I think that it uh, definitely, you know, it's it's definitely not a good look for them. But at the same time, I can see the redemption story for it and the, the kind of persecution uh, penal aspect to this as well. You know, we punished them. Are they allowed to rejoin society? Well, you know, obviously, yes. Yeah. But the I think the question that has a lot of people bogged down is something you already mentioned is, 
shouldn't it have been a full season suspension? Because if you look at other games like League of Legends, Overwatch, Counter Strike, you get caught cheating at a LAN, you're banned for like five years. Like, yeah, it's, or it's you know, serious. people are toxic. Like some people have just said you know racist things on servers and gotten banned for six months or a year. Like I will dominate from League of Legends. The famous example of that: the dude was just not fun to play with in solo queue. He would say all sorts of bad things to people. Um, and some of those things got t- taken out of context Like people would be egging him on to try to get him to say the most egregious thing they could. But at the same time, he would say them. And then that got used as a reason to, I mean, Riot full out banned him for a long time uh, and actually ruined his career because he was a good player at the time that he got banned. And when he came back, the, the world of League of Legends had moved on. You know, we saw so many of those early players in that game not be able to adapt to the later seasons. Very few stuck around the whole the whole time. A lot of them have had to retire. And unfortunately, he was on yeah. that ladder crew. So it kind of robbed him of his whole career. On the one hand, I do like it because I do think that overall, esports has gone very, like like I was just saying, you do anything wrong, you're out. And I don't necessarily think that's how we should approach it. I definitely think there should be a rehabilitation process to an extent and allowing people to you know, have a second chance. Um, yeah. But at the same time, I definitely sympathize with those people who say they should have been banned for at least this World Cup. I think to me that makes a lot of sense. Uh, it's, it's hard to know really what the right decision is. Obviously, yeah, at this point, there's not much we can do about it. I think that the, the only thing that was keeping them from banning them the, for the entirety of this, the remainder of the season was because of the randomness that attributes to the game, to Battle Royale, uh, that you can't be 100% sure, but everybody was right. 99% sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. It's yeah, not as it, clear cut as having like an aim bot installed. Right, right. Yeah, exactly what I'm saying. So now that I guess that's where they wanted to have some sort of a limited uh, suspension on it, uh, just to f- flex in some way and show and you know try try and uh, you know reinforce the rules. But man, they're almost in a situation probably of thinking we didn't think we'd actually get here. Uh, they probably, who knows if they thought that they would actually be able to qualify again. I mean, because there's so many people that are trying. So it's it's pretty insane that they were able to come back and do this. But, I mean, if they actually did do it legit this time, it just goes to show you, like, that they're that good. Like, they didn't have to do this in the first place. Why even attempt it? There's so many, so many questions. Yeah, it really does make it frustrating. Um, my, I remembered my third point. Just giving that little pause was, was great. Um, what do you think... Like, how do you think they're going to interact with the people at the World Cup? Because, I mean, you know, you you go to events, uh, I've gone to events. It's a very close-knit community, right? Everybody's friends. Um, do you think this experience is actually going to be ruined for them now to an extent? Because people are going to not necessarily want to associate with them that much or going to look down on them or be like, you guys are no. cheaters. Or do you think everyone's going to forgive and forget? Like, what what's your take on that? Twitter Twitter is... Twitter is not the real world. Twitter is so different than the real world. People talk so much online, and then they get to the event. They're only going to give them weird looks. They're, they're, they'll be all right. <laughs> Ronaldo and Ziff might not be able to uh, hang out and uh, with a lot of people, but uh, they'll, they'll, they'll be. They, they might get some stuff yelled at them, perhaps. I mean, I don't know. Other than that, I think they'll be okay. But um, I, most people that are there, I mean, they're just trying to play. They're trying to bring their A game. They're trying to focus. You know, why are why are you going to waste this time there? Like even, even spectators, you know, no one's going there like, oh, I'm going there and I'm going to hassle these guys or heckle these guys. Like, you know, everyone's going there because it's the Fortnite World Cup and it's going to be a great event and memorable event. Uh, these guys just so happen to be a part of the ride. So uh, they, uh, if anything, I think they'll get a cold shoulder and that's about it uh, from some people. But, uh, you know, let's let's see if they actually come and play and uh, earn uh, earn back a lot of that respect. Yeah, definitely. I think that's the most important thing for them now is to really put on a great show. Like if I were them, you know, and yeah. you made this mistake and you really did feel sorry and you wanted to kind of fix it, then the best thing you can do is practice, 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 practice for the World Cup and make sure you were in tip-top shape, put on a great performance, place very well, and then earn that respect that way. Like, well, we didn't cheat here, guys, and we still managed to do it. So yep. um, I think that's a fair point. I did hear a caster talking about it, and he was saying he wasn't, you know, he wasn't necessarily happy. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to say which caster it was. Um but he did say that he wasn't necessarily happy about this. And, you know, he was probably going to have to bring it up on stream and he was going to be honest about it. And his thoughts were that they shouldn't be at the World Cup. Um, so that'll be interesting to have a caster on stream. Like, I don't know how Epic's going to feel about that. Maybe they'll, maybe yeah. they saw the same thing I did and were like, nope, you're not allowed to say that. We really don't want you to say that. Um, I, um, yeah. 
I don't agree with it either. They shouldn't be there. But, uh, you know, it, what happened happened. So, we're, uh, you know, they're not going to change their decision now. They're not going to say, no. never mind, they're actually out. Unless the, something else comes to light. So, just going to have to roll with it at this point. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, I think that pretty much does as much as, you know, we want to on that subject. I don't necessarily know if there's anything else yeah. we can really discuss. We've kind of most most things have been said, yeah, about that subject in a lot of channels as well as here. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, Reddit was pretty vocal about it, and I think they felt overall the same way that we did. So, yeah. uh, we agree with you, Reddit. We agree. Don't don't come for us. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next one that I wanted to talk about, the other, you know, big discussion going on this week was something that we touched on last week, but last week was more speculative. All we had was a Facebook post or some good research by journalists who kind of went through Facebook posts, I should say. Mm -hmm. This time, we have an actual story. So, uh, you know, Slasher tweeted this out the other day and um, kind of put in the fact that uh, High Rise has been banned from Twitch. High Sky. High Sky, sorry, High mm -hmm. Rise. I'm thinking Tilted Talk, you know, Tilted, High Rise. <laughs> You're forgiven. Yeah. All is forgiven. Okay, good. Um but yeah, so High Sky, who is obviously, you know, the player, essentially, if you guys missed last week or aren't up to date with the story, he is, was claimed to be 13, year old, 13 years old by Face Clam and was actually 12. Yep. Um, and they signed him. They signed him up for Twitch accounts and all this sort of stuff, claiming he was 13. So obviously, you know, Twitch partnered with him, all that sort of good stuff because he's a member of FaZe. They assumed FaZe had done their due diligence. Unfortunately, that was not the case. And it looks like... He's been banned from Twitch. I'm assuming he's also not going to be allowed to compete in any Fortnite tournaments. Although and Epic has not issued an official statement on that. I think the rules are that you can if you qualify, but you can't win any prize money. Yeah, yeah. So you can compete. You just yeah. can't win money and you can't qualify to go do anything. So it essentially would just be like playing a good practice, essentially. But he can't actually, you know, quote unquote, compete. Yeah, yeah, that's um, that's unfortunate, but I mean, you, you know, rules are rules. So, it's uh for for them to try and undercut the uh, epic on that. If that was the case, uh, which I mean, let's be real, uh, you had to have known. I mean, there somebody lied somewhere, and I don't think that the lie was High Sky or High Sky's family to Phase Clan about side because you know when you sign when you sign a contract like that, you have to look at you know you can't just take word for it you know there's a lot of uh, due diligence that goes into that kind of thing and and, yeah. and and that kind of thing would probably become apparent so you know the question is at what part of the at what part of the you know the the, the pattern here uh, of events here you know somebody somebody somewhere was lying and uh yeah it's not looking good because i think a lot of this hate's coming down on phase clan hard yeah, I mean, it's been a rough couple weeks for FaZe Clan, man. I am not, I, I mean, I think they signed Nick Merckx. I was that about to say, they picked up Nick Merckx, and now, day by day, it's looking like that that decision is questionable because with all the hate that they're getting, I mean, it make it, my first thought was, what, what, what kind of money did they offer him? What kind of deal did they offer Nick Merckx? Because Nick Merckx just moved back to his home state. Uh, he, he looked like that he was kind of uh, just in chill mode, ready to just... Uh, you know, kind of do his own thing, ha had a really good subscriber base, still does, obviously. And I, I thought he was going to, after the 100 Thieves um, debacle when he left them, I thought he was just going to stay solo. Um, and then this came out of kind of nowhere. I mean, absolute nowhere. Um, the video, so a lot, oh my God. Right, a lot of if people- you guys right, haven't seen that, yeah, watch it. A lot of people just think it's a huge PR attempt, but I mean, you know, Nick Merckx is his own man, so he can make his own decisions as well. So that just makes me wonder how much- coin did he get for this because his whole thing with how thieves uh there was a rumor well uh, pretty much fact now um it, it was it came out that uh nade shot had promised nick Merckx a significant portion of the hundred thieves brand and then a you know a, but but i guess only um only verbally and uh retracted that at some point later down the road so nick Merckx nade shot had a big falling out and they never really saw eye to eye so that's pretty much one of the reasons why Nick Burks ended up uh, moving on. But yeah, I mean, of all the times to now sign with FaZe, I would think that this was a, a you know, kind of a while in the making. It's not like it just happened overnight. Uh, so uh, that that's why I think it's just bad timing for all this stuff to happen because uh, it, it seemed like it was supposed to be uh, a good thing for FaZe. You know, this was going to be a celebratory time with the, the whole thing with Nick Merckx, but now it's kind of flying under the radar with all this other stuff that's coming up. 
Yeah, yeah. It was kind of like half a day's worth of news, right? And then everything else. It's like it's almost like the rest of the world. Like the news cycle yeah. is just, for, at least for FaZe Clan, has gotten so bad and vicious that it's just not a, not ideal. Uh, to kind of switch things back over to High Sky here for a second. Um, so obviously, you know, he's banned from Twitch. He can't stream. I think that that will be up. I think that will be he will be unbanned upon his thirteenth birthday. Would be my assumption. Imagine. I don't think. I was like thinking, imagine he's like, he's, he's already done like pretty okay so far since he yeah. started on Twitch. So imagine he, they're like, you know, you, you, uh, violated terms of service. We're closing your account, but you have accumulated some Twitch revenue. We're going to hold this until you're able to stream. And he has now probably like thousands of dollars that he can't even touch. I'm assuming, yeah. uh, if I, if I can assume that right. So oh, that, dude, Twitch is owned by Amazon. Of, they're not holding that revenue. They're taking that revenue. Oh, that's Are you very kidding true. me. That's very true. Jeff Bezos didn't become a billionaire by uh, holding on to people's money for them and putting it in an envelope. Very he's, true. Uh, he's taking that for himself, unfortunately. They're, and the thing is, is that I think they might actually legally have to as well because – I think so too. The thing with – you know, like a lot of people say, well, why, why punish him, blah, blah, blah. It's like I don't think any of the companies wanted to necessarily punish him. The problem is, is that the labor laws and all the laws actually, unless you're talking specifically about child actors – Anything that does not fall into that bubble is insanely complicated. He could say he's actually a really terrible Fortnite player, and he's been acting as a very, very talented player the entire time. Boom, he gets his money, and he's good to go. I mean, I just solved the whole problem right there. So, <laughs> they just picked me enough. up as an idea machine. Or what, what are they called? What does Disney, what did Disney have? The, the dream makers or something? The idea something makers? Like that. Yeah. Something like that. Somebody help me with that. I don't know. I'm going there in two weeks anyway. I'll talk. I'll I'll, I'll talk to Walt. I'll, I'll ask him. I'll see what's up. Okay, you're gone the week after E3, right? <laughs> That's true. I am. So okay. Uh, so that'll be a, an interesting week. We'll have to figure something out. Maybe true. we'll just yeah. I don't know. Maybe we'll take a little a little pause. Maybe we'll, we'll have a guest on or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Conversation for a later day. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I, I just don't think that uh, you know they're going to hold him accountable. Nobody necessarily wanted to. It's just like I said, the the labor situation is that I think legally they have to. Um, Oh my God, my phone just rang. I hopefully I, I caught that before it started ringing on the, on the show. I didn't turn my phone on vibrate. Hi, guys. Today's been going great. You talking, isn't it? You talking shit? <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh oh oh. All right, we'll do, we'll do. I'm sorry, man. Uh, yeah, t today's been going fantastic, hasn't it? It's just been awful. Um, had a lot of weird things happen to us today, guys. We've we've been trying. The fact that we're even sitting here right now is a miracle. Is a miracle. Um, I'm happy to hear it. Let me think. Is there anything else with Faze? I mean, we haven't really heard much on the Tifu situation. That's kind of just oh, flown under the radar for the past week. So that's that's nice for Tifu. Thinks he's just been able to focus on competing, which I'm sure he appreciates. Uh, and the Cloaksy thing also hasn't gotten much more news since we discussed it last week with him apparently leaving. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see what happens there. But you know, ultimately, I hope the best for them. They've been an organization that's been around a long, long time. Um, I don't know. We'll see what happens. You know, obviously the the problem is too is that the court of public opinion is very different than uh, the like actual court, right? Right. Wait. Like uh, in, ter well, in terms of you know, like especially on Twitter and in esports, you have some people who are very very young. They're very idealistic. Well, he should be able to leave if he wants to, or well, this should be the way the world works. It's like yeah, but it's not. There's contracts. There's this. There's you know. There's like real world things. Um, and that kind of takes precedence sometimes over what everybody wishes would happen in an ideal world. Like, well, he should just be able to leave whenever he wants. Well, I mean, that would be the case if that was in his contract that he could, you know, terminate by giving two weeks written notice, like normal jobs. Uh, but that's not what he's got here. Mm. Um, we might actually have a video from Nate shot on Cloaksy. I don't know if we can play the audio on stream. I don't think we'd want to get, you know, flagged or anything like that. Um, well, we might have that for you guys because okay. apparently there was a a quick a quick uh, announcement by Nate Shot there on that subject. Interesting. Oh, okay. So it was just a reaction. Uh, that was our producer. I'm pretty sure you guys could hear that. Oh, okay. Never mind. He was just in my ear. Not. I more. knew he was. I knew he was just. 
I'm a real professional here, guys. I don't know. Nobody tell, can but. hear him. And I'm thinking, I'm like, I I know he's just in our ear, right? And then you're like, you, yeah. and then when you acknowledge I, him, I'm I like, maybe through. we can I went through. Him. Yeah, I, I don't know. I thought maybe. I don't know how this works. That's never happened before. I'm learning, guys. I'm learning. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. This has been yeah, a exactly. ridiculous day, honestly. Okay. Um, I think that pretty much covers Face Clan, man, too, because there's just not like, just wasn't all that much, unless you have something else that you want to add in. Yeah, we pretty much covered everything uh, for that. I, I mean, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's video. run the video though, if we can. Let's 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 see this. What is it? Eight zero and then percent. P E. I know how to spell percent. Close. R. Cent. You serious? All right. Yeah. How do I accept you? Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> uh, press the, press your name in the top right, and then friends, and it should be under friend request. Oh, I have so many friend requests. There's so many people that want to be my friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, you're the best. Did Thanks, <laughs> man. <laughs> Okay, interesting. Hmm. So that that came out from Emstar, apparently. Clip that. And obviously, that looked like it was. Obviously, that looked like it was from you know Nade Shot stream. Um, but I don't know. Maybe he'll maybe he'll punch Face Clan back for that uh, video that they shot out. I mean, the Face Clan Hundred Thieves drama is amazing. This is what soap operas are made of. You have uh, yeah. Banks and and Nade Shot just going at it, really. Although yeah. Nade Shot really hasn't said anything directly to Banks. Um, yeah, oh that's, God, that's the actual tweet itself. <laughs> Oh, yeah, man, don't you forget, guys, Twitter start. is still free with all this amazing drama. We get to see this all unfold for free. This is amazing. <laughs> it's, it's, dude, it's... God bless the internet, man. Um, they just collect all your information and, you know, advertise to you based on that. Small but, hey, price that could to be pay. Useful. That's what I say. That's what I say. It can be useful. Uh, okay, so with all that being said, I think, you know, we've kind of beat these two subjects to death a little bit here. So it's time for the clips of the week. Guys... As I say every single week, but I'm still not getting anywhere near as many clips as I'd like to receive. Mm -hmm. Send me your highlights. If you get a nice clip, send I that to me. I guess everybody watching just isn't good at the game and they don't got highlights. Send us your highlights. We know you got them. Send them. Just send them. <laughs> low key, we low key roast, but yeah, we, we do. We do. I like watching people get owned, okay? It's, it makes me happy. It brings me joy to see people accomplish what oh, I could not. I couldn't so, see up to this show. Uh, Don't get it twisted. I thought you were going to try to under an alias. Is that not a plan anymore? Uh, I mean, I could, but then I got to, you know, get... Then you got to come clean. Yeah, it's not, not a whole thing. Uh, I'd rather stay anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, says Don't the man need all the pressure. Camera. Says the man on camera. Okay, but with all with all that being said, guys, clips of the week. Let's get started with clip number one. Coned himself. So this is a clip from Yahia Nabil. Ooh, he didn't clip that first shot, but he got the second one. Oh, oh, oh that's so edit. sick. Oh, the, the, the slow motion spikes coming out. He missed that by an... Oh, wow, that was close. Yeah, I mean, he literally survived that. Like, if you see here, he, this is a solo, it looks like, right? He doesn't have a teammate mm -hmm. or anything. So, uh, that was a nail biter. I, actually, no, it must have been a duo. Bang. He would have died from the, the trap. first guy. Wow, yeah. dude. Oh, that's so sweet. Oh, my that God. Is, that is crazy. So, I don't know. <laughs> I love that. And didn't see that, but hit the shot, clutched up. That is huge. That wow. is huge. Good clip. Good first clip. That was solid. I like it. The thea very theatrical. It was, right? That's what I thought. Um, clip number two is actually... Okay, you're going to like this. This is a team I already clip. like the skin. Team XWI. Yeah, this is the best skin. So, you know, you see these guys. They're playing squads. And they've got uh, a squad that looks like they're holed up here in some metal. And they're not letting them snipe in. These guys are playing super defensive. So you see this player there. Notice that ping. He pinged it, right? Weakened it just enough, and watch what happens. Yes! Boom! Mm -hmm. Let's go, CJ. That's a perfect that setup, They dude. coordinated that. I love it. That was beautiful. That is teamwork at its finest. Putting damage into it so you can see through it. 
Make sure you see where they're at. Put your head cursor on the head. One guy shoots. Uh, pretty much you guys shoot at the same time. One guy half second off and you're good to go. Yeah, exactly. Um, they both just fired and that was... I love that. The reaction was a little bit delayed. You see the button, you see the uh, bullet, excuse me, hit the metal wall before the second guy shoots. Yeah. But still, that was incredible. Uh, really cool coordination. And I think that, you know, as the game evolves even further, you're going to see even more stuff like that, where people learn how to time things and make sure that they're doing stuff like that at the same time, uh, especially in duos, right? It's such a powerful thing that you can do. Uh, but obviously that, I have to run snipers. Okay, uh, nice. Thank you for the, thank Welcome. You for the host. Welcome, everybody. We appreciate the host very much. Um, we're right now doing clips of the week. So you guys are here for the perfect time. You get to watch people pull off ridic ridiculous clips. First two, were, first two were insane. First two were it. really good. Clip number three. We'll come back and we'll show you guys number one and two afterwards. But we got we to gotta keep the continuity going here. So clip number three. This again. Actually, this was, in my personal opinion, this is, might be the best one we got tonight. This guy goes off. Oh, he's got the green tech, which is a nightmare, according to most people, to use. Oh, how did he not boogie bomb himself is what I want to know. He's out of mats, too. Oh. That's the kill. He went Legends of the Hidden Temple on that guy, dude. He just shot he's not below done. at the bottom of the pit. Look at him go, dude. That guy dude. is nutty. That's this the guy is right there. I love yeah, it. See, this, that's this... why I love the grenades. My loadout always has impulses and boogie bombs every single time. Every time. Do you pull off plays like this, though? How does he not boogie bomb himself? Because he's Dude, in he the was, air, I guess. He was he just was out the just radius. outside of the radius, man. Like, wow. maybe by, like, a step. Like, if he Puts had thrown that half wall down later. there. Yep. Oh, Runs out of man. mats. Realizes there's a guy above him. Good night. Good. And then... He had to be picture perfect on that shot. And he was. He was. was he, used, um, he used nearly his entire inventory uh, effectively on that one. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. He basically went through all of it, showed that every gun that he had was necessary. Well, I guess not really the pistol. That was um, tight. Saw rifle's always necessary. But then this shot, too, like midair. I mean, the guys were a little bit weak, but still impressive. Love a solid also, controller player. Yep. And it was also in competitive. You saw that three plus three hype there popping up. So you can see, guys, that he was playing. He's got 146 points. So, you know, not at the very top, deep. but That's he's deep. not playing bots. Okay. He's oh. not, he's not playing those bots. So, Great job from him there. Um, shout out. That was that was impressive. Clip numero cuatro. Mm -hmm. This guy's name is... Oh, I want to give this guy the win just based on his name. Oh, it's his Twitter name only. Nipolis Cage. Oh, my God. Oh! Did him dirty. Yo, that's an old clip. Or is this from Creative? Uh, I don't know. This was posted today. The notice the grenade that he used. Yes, you're right. Super old school. Okay, so he just and he's got a jetpack on his back. I, f I feel bad now because we uh, this was supposed to be uh, done this week. I should have picked up on that. This I clip just saw is the from 1935. Did you guys know that? Oh wow, wow! I didn't know we could get a clip in there. Way to go, <laughs> thank you, David. <laughs> but guys, this is why you need to send me your best clips of the week, like whatever's yeah. in the current patch. Not best clips of the decade, all please. time. Yeah, please. No. Let's not let's not go with that. But yeah, definitely that was gross. But I think unfortunately we're gonna have to disqualify him because it wasn't of this week. But still, yeah, great. Even though play. he did have a fantastic name. Yeah, come back with did. that nip, nipless cage. Nasty, nasty play. <laughs> all right, guys. For all of our viewers that have joined us through the host, which again we appreciate you guys. We appreciate the host and we appreciate you guys sticking around. Uh, let's roll clips one and two again real fast, and then I yes. want to see you guys vote in the chat. Type in one, two, three, or four for the clip. So we just watched clips three and four. This is clip number one. Uh, we've already watched this, but for the guys who just came in, we want to make sure that you guys have a chance to see it as well. So mm -hmm. we'll play these for you. Yeah, th just oh, the slow motion. This was like, oh, dude, that was like the end of an anime, man, like or something. I don't have no idea. I can almost see it pausing halfway through, and it's like to be continued next time on oh, yeah. Dragon Ball Z or something. The, the slow motion spikes added to that so well. And then here's the second clip where. I just, I, th this is the the epitome of team coordination. I love it. Yeah, this is uh, the definition and the reason that there is a saying that goes, teamwork makes the dream work. They see a guy hiding in there, and their dream is to murder him. And together, 
they will accomplish it. I love the oh. timing on that. The timing was saucy. Yeah, it was beautiful. Just even pulling out the AR, weakening it so that one bullet from the sniper would, in fact, take down the metal. Really high IQ play. And then again, he pinged exactly where the player was. You see, you're going to see him do this here. Um, you, put, you see him put down that marker. They both know where to shoot now. Weakens it a little bit, lines it up, and he can see through the damaged metal, as you alluded to earlier, Tyler. Um, yep. That allows them to see through it a little bit, see where the guy is, and they got the kill. So, good googly moogly. Mm -mm. What a clip. What that clip. was a good one. I got to go with three, though. Cheeky Chimp 8, man. That one was nice. Yeah, that's my vote, too. Uh, I'm, I'm, all for, I'm all for clip three. Guys, what do you think was the best clip this week? Put one, two, three, or four in the chat, and we will check it out. I think we've also got answers from Twitter, actually. Cool. So, I think we should. Let's check it out. We have one vote on Mixer. It looks like a vote for oh, on Mixer for no. number one. And then, oh, oh no. well, that's okay. That all defaults away because Nipples Cage got disqualified. So, we got to go with Cheeky Chimp. Yeah. Yeah, we do. We have to go. So, yeah, that's how that works. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I guess that pretty much uh, does it for that section. Congrats again to Cheeky Chimp. Um, Sounds straight nasty. Straight juvenile yeah. in this. Um, guys, and again, send us your clips. We want to see them. If you have them, send them to us. Send them to me. Send them we to Atilt Talk Show on Twitter. Your clips. Send them to Tyler. And maybe you'll win Clip of the Week, and then you'll be entered in Clip of the Season. And we oh, we have two votes for two, actually. Okay. Maybe chat's going to overrule us here. So clip number two was the uh, the Funk Ops uh, skin uh, tied yes. in the sniper. Clip one was the uh, was that one you saw the two on one with the slow motion spikes coming out of the wall, like timing the final kill perfectly right before the trap went off. So number three was the the madness on top of the Viking Mountain. So yeah, I, I'm I'm okay with number two. Personally. I'm absolutely okay with number two. Number two was just as sexy as number three. Yeah, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. It really was. Um, okay, guys, if you have any questions for us, I don't think we got any on Twitter. Uh, if you want them answered in the future, you can always tweet them at myself. You can tweet them at Tyler, or you can tweet them at Tilted Talk Show, and we will answer them. Or you can put them in our Discord as well. Uh, we'll make sure that the Discord links are in the chats, and you can join up there if you're looking for people to play Fortnite with or you want to talk about Fortnite, especially the competitive side of things. Uh, that's generally what we do here. Yep. But... And if anybody has any questions, we can answer those. And if not, I think this is going to be our shortest show ever to date. I think no this is updates, no guests. We, nope. you know, we're we're sailing into the next couple of weeks, and we have the uh, the update tomorrow, which is going to change a lot of stuff. So, let's see how that storm in a bottle is going to uh, treat things. Why did they have to delay the patch? Work harder, devs. I don't care if you're working eighty hours a week. Work ninety. Get it done. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You guys are great. It's uh savage. Yeah, no, nah, don't, don't take that seriously, guys. Uh, <laughs> but I don't really see any uh, any questions like that or anything coming in. Um, looks like our, our chat is happy to just watch. No interaction. Guys, we're not scary, we promise. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm not going to lie. The Raptors Golden State game starts in 10 minutes. So I do think that, you know, most of the world is going to want to do that in 10 minutes. So maybe let's give you guys a chance to I go. I can thank the Raptors for stealing a game away from the Warriors because now everyone in America gets free taco next week at Taco Bell. Yes. So I can thank you for that. We will. We will. I'll thank and you for that, but I hate you because you get to go to E3 and I don't. So. Well, oh, yeah, guys, if you're going to be at E3, come, you know, if you see me walking around, I'll be by the Fortnite station quite a bit. Uh, come say hello. We'd love to meet some of you guys in person. And make an introduction. Uh, we might also have a question, actually. So let's, you know, let's not wrap this up just yet. What's up, Prime Nova? We see you there. Um, hit us with it. You got it. Man, that Let clips of the it. week. Otherwise, clips of the week is always such a free for all. Yeah, well, it's like it's it's tough to kind of judge too, right? Because I try to His find like, the most highest skilled up. ones. <laughs> he just says, "Question was the Raptors are winning." That's his question. Oh, the Raps are winning. Yeah. Well, obviously, I mean, look behind me. Go, Raps. Go, baby. And <laughs> yes, lock it in. I love it. That is the new emote. And uh, I think it fits perfectly oh, for what we man. were saying. Um, what do we think of the High Sky situation? Oh, this is unfortunate, Nova, because we actually mentioned this. Uh, this was on our hot take section. Do we want to do like a 10-second recap? 
Uh, yeah, we could. Um, also, everybody that tuned in, make sure that you guys check the entire re-upload of the episode when it is uh, fresh on YouTube, which will be uploaded, I believe, uh, within uh, about 12 hours after the episode's uh, done airing. Um, within that time. Uh, so I did, did get confirmation on that. So we can get... Uh, we're also going to upload a lot of highlight clips from this as well. But we can give you guys a rundown uh, of what we were discuss- discussing earlier regarding that situation um, with High Sky and the Face Clan. It's it, it's pretty much... It's pretty terrible timing just because Nick Merckx got signed by Face Clan and I'm willing to bet that that, hap- that was a lot of time in the making. Uh, and... You know, now with this whole situation coming out on top of Tifu pulling back out of phase as well as Cloaksy, they're losing a lot of star power. So it, it it's kind of looking like, a, you know, was this a bad move for somebody like Nick Merckx? A lot of, a lot of you know, I, obviously I th- he's definitely made some pretty smart decisions at, at this point. But right now uh, it seems that phase is uh, kind of, I don't know, get, uh, I don't want to say sinking ship at all. I mean, they're a really big organization. I'm not saying that at all, but I've been hearing a lot of terrible things Weird from a stuff. lot of different sources. Yeah, yeah. things things aren't looking good for them. Uh, with High Sky in particular, you know, obviously it sucks that he got banned on Twitch. Uh, yeah. And it probably is, you know, is not going to be allowed to compete officially for money in yeah. Fortnite and, tournaments. And, and, and to just reiterate, he's, uh, High Sky got banned on Twitch and uh, he's not allowed to compete because he is not 13 years of age, which is the exactly. minimal age cutoff. He actually turned out to be 12. So yeah. uh, apparently there was somebody uh, along, the, along, the, along the way that uh, wasn't telling the full truth. So uh, that's really going to uh, mess things up uh, uh, legally for, for some people. Yeah, because essentially, you know, they – they claimed he was 13. He wasn't 13. And the way that the laws work in you know Europe and America and you know most of the developed world is that if you're not 13, the only thing you can really do for money is be a child actor. They do have you know very special laws and contracts and clauses that allow for that sort of thing. But for something like a competition, like a sport, um, the way that esports is and streaming and entertaining, this hasn't yet fallen under those same laws. Now maybe this will open up cases and court cases to kind of classify YouTubers and streamers and esports players that play from home and still go to school under these same child actor laws where they would be allowed to compete under the age of 13. But as yeah. of right now, if you guys notice, there's no game company that will ever allow people under the age of 13 to officially compete for money or for prizes mm-hmm. or for trips or anything like that. And it's because giving away prizes uh, to people under the age of 13 is – it basically makes the entire thing about 1 million times more complicated. So a lot of companies say, well, why bother? We'll just go 13 and up. Yeah. Um, so that's essentially the quick rundown of the situation. If you want to see the full one, Nova, um, we have that for you on our VOD. That will be up, like Tyler said here, in 12 hours. So we will put that on our at Tilted Talk Show on Twitter. Make sure you guys follow that. That has all of our updates. You can send us stuff there. Yep. And uh, we'll, we'll, we're happy to interact with you guys. Also join our Discord. That will be in the chat. And thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for sticking around, especially if you've been here since the beginning of the episode. You guys are the reason we do this. It means a lot to us. Tell yep. your friends. There's a new Fortnite podcast in town, and it's awesome. But until next time, take care, guys. Peace. Peace.